a mystery in Saskatchewan. We're in Coshin, and we're here to find out why they chose to put a lighthouse in one of Canada's foremost prairie provinces. The resort village of Coshin is home to Saskatchewan's only lighthouse, but that's not surprising since Saskatchewan is a completely landlocked province. Looking to the north, the fields are endless, but if you turn around to face the south, you land right in front of Jackfish Lake. Now, if you want to enjoy the view from the locally famous beacon, at 153 steps, it's no small feat to get to the top. I don't know if I'm uh, qualified for 152 steps after three months of isolation. Would you believe me if I told you I normally run up? Don't. <laughs> don't believe me. You've got calves of steel, you must do this a lot. Uh, pretty well every day. <laughs> Can you tell me what you think this lighthouse has done for Koshin? Oh, let's put it on the map. Uh, you didn't even know about it until you started looking, and now you're here and you're amazed. And the word spreads. People say, yeah, we're up the Koshin, we went up the hill. Is it ever great up there? You can see forever. We wouldn't have had the exposure that we now have and have had without the lighthouse. I think it's pretty unique to have a lighthouse in a prairie province, why a lighthouse for Koshin? Well, the village was incorporated in 1988, effective January 1, uh, as the resort village of Koshin. The first mayor was a man by the name of Tom Archdeacon, and he had traveled to the East Coast uh, the year before, and of course had seen lighthouses out there. Okay, it was, it was inspired. Actually inspired, and he came back all revved up with, <laughs> we've got to put a lighthouse on top of Piro Hill. I am so thrilled that this was inspired by the coast because that you, you kind of have a hunch, but you never know. How did they come up with this particular design? That's lost in history. <laughs> uh, and uh, I suspect there was a lot of uh, uh, on the backs of envelopes, sketching and so on. But ultimately there would have been a plan and the, we've looked for the blueprints. We cannot find the blueprints. From a distance it looks much larger than it is, so the interior is uh, maybe 14 feet across and there's no room to have stairs up or anything like that there's just a service ladder in there oh sweet yeah so nobody goes up there other than for servicing no okay could i go up there absolutely yes <laughs> <laughs> here we go in 1988 premier grant divine's government was uh, giving out grants for various things oh spider web see you so the village applied for a grant to the provincial government and was approved and $32,000 later, uh, we have the lighthouse and the surround of the lighthouse. For over 20 years, Koshin has been home to the Koshin Community Players, a theatre group that puts on performances every spring and fall. But what is it really like to be in the performing arts in a small resort village? They're here to tell us. What do both of you do here at the Community Players? Well, I've been producer for the last few plays and a stage manager a couple of times and just fill in whenever. I've had various roles as an actor, director, prop builder, just various things. We started in 1996 with audiences of around 200 per year and then we've just progressed from there. So we've been in business for 25 years. At each show we sell probably in excess of a thousand tickets. So, you know, because we do, I think, seven or eight performances of each, of each show. And so, uh, and it's dinner theater. Uh, people really seem to like the dinner theater uh, motif. Uh, uh, we, um, so we, we bring a lot of people together. We sell a lot of tickets and uh, we, we are actually profitable. So we have used our profits to improve the, uh, the community hall. Koshin has had quite an interesting history. This was a big, big resort village back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Lots of uh, performance history here, I would say. So I think that Koshin has become known, perhaps not as a cultural center of uh, Saskatchewan, but, uh, but there's a lot of culture here. And uh, when people come, we hope they leave talking about our play and about the whole experience of coming here to Koshin. Unlike many of the monuments across the prairies, the lighthouse here seems to be widely accepted. The residents of Koshin have never looked at it as anything but a symbol of the community, even a few generations later. 
been our landmark and it's truly it's what identifies us if you talk to somebody who's maybe been through here or heard of it and you say I'm from Coach and they'll say is that where the lighthouse is <laughs> yeah yeah so something that uh, connects us with a landmark that, that everybody knows about you know it may seem a bit odd but it's still this beautiful beacon on the top of a hill beside a massive lake on a lake exactly yeah so it still it still has a, a purpose if you had that in the middle of the prairies with no lake it wouldn't have near the value I think or the connotation to it I think it's uh, just a great thing especially with it located right on the edge of the lake like that but it was yeah. a unique idea nobody else had it and uh, as council now we certainly do our best to keep it up to maintain it and keep it attractive and, and it's still an operating lighthouse people all over Saskatchewan can point out Koshin on a map because of this lighthouse it wasn't put there to serve as public art or anything other than what it is a beacon of light for this community